everyone. Today is the 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time and of course it's Father's Day. Our Gospel reading is from the Gospel according to Luke. Great crowds were travelling with Jesus and he turned and addressed them. If anyone comes to me without hating his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple either. Which of you wishing to construct a tower does not first sit down and calculate the cost to see if there is enough for its completion? Otherwise, after laying the foundation and finding himself unable to finish the work, the onlooker should laugh at him and say, this one began to build, but did not have the resources to finish. Or what king marching into battle would not first sit down and decide whether with 10,000 troops he can successfully oppose another king advancing upon him with 20,000 troops? But if not, while he is still far away, he will send a delegation to ask for peace terms. In the same way, any one of you who does not renounce all his possessions cannot be my disciple. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. On Sundays, I love to proclaim the Gospel with joy and conclude with some joyful words that mean the good news of the Lord, to which you can reply loudly, Thanks be to God. Today, that's a challenge. This gospel passage from Luke, which refers to a disciple. If anyone comes to me without hating father, mother, wife, children, and his own life too, he cannot be my disciple. And all that on Father's Day. Some years ago, in a previous parish, there was a family whose mum had died and dad had remarried. But things were rather tense between the family and dad's new wife. The dad was living in another state and in failing health. So the daughters went to visit him, stayed at his bedside until he died. But for some unknown reason, his second wife chose not to be there with them. The daughters returned home and asked me for a memorial mass on the first Sunday in September. All fine. I explained that we needed to use the Sunday readings, but when we looked at the gospel, I was horrified. Our need to hate father, mother, wife, children, and so on. And I suggested we choose a different gospel. The girl smiled. It's okay, Father, that's our family. In year C, when Luke's Gospel is read, our fear is that Father's Day will land on the 23rd Sunday of the year, and of course this year it does. And this Gospel referring to the disciple needing to hate significant people in his or her life presents a problem. My question is, as it often is, does the church have a sense of humour? Well, apparently so. Though in this case, it's all by sheer chance. Following Jesus costs us, makes demands on us. And the expression in this gospel is extreme. The Semitic idiom of expressing preference uses love or hate and it isn't as subtle as ours. If we prefer one person or thing to another we may use like or dislike, prefer or avoid. We don't use hate very often. At least the context here is Jesus' invitation to the kingdom and the supreme good in accepting Jesus' call. Every family can easily 
answer the question, how do we care for one another? The gospel is actually about being single-minded. And in family life, we usually are. Being ready to pay the price when we love others is what Jesus commands us to do. To look at our priorities. What makes our life tick? Are the goals we set ourselves really worth it? Are we wasting our gifts? These are the questions our fathers answer by how they live and serve us, their commitment to family. And today we honour that. In our first reading from the book of Sirach, each of us, including fathers, lives in the mystery. That's where disciples live, in the mystery. What person can know the intentions of God? Who can divine the will of the Lord? Uncertainty, instability, perishability, limitations, burdened in mind. Following Jesus isn't something we do in a vacuum, in a disembodied way, separate from family and those we love and who love us. So why such an extreme statement? Perhaps this is Jesus' way of helping us place the important things like the kingdom at the centre of our lives, putting things in perspective. Part of this response to being a disciple, Jesus says, is to carry our cross. Now, I'm not too keen on the cross. It's too heavy. I can't control what our cross is. And I can't shift it when I want to. And I can't pass it on to someone else. Our cross is already here. We don't have to go looking for it because the cross finds us anyway. But the cross changes us, makes us who we are, expands our hearts, forms us as people with a great capacity for love. And that occurs in all of our lives. The cross may be our brother or our sister, our parent or our child, our spouse, the family member who doesn't cope, carries illness or age, struggles within, deals with personal loss in all its forms. Sometimes the cross is ourselves. My dad carried the cross. He was twice widowed. He spent a number of years caring for his elderly mother and sick brother. And he lived with my absence for six years when I was studying for the Augustinians in America. He was a most generous, loving man. Yes, our cross enriches the lives of those we love and sometimes the lives of those who do not love us. Such is discipleship and such is fatherhood. As Christians, we carry one another and they carry us. Fathers aren't always perfect, but today is a day for us to reflect with appreciation on the gift of our dads and our mums and their great sacrifices for us. If we find this day difficult, and some will, let us offer that to the Lord and ask him to receive our story with great love and heal our relationships and memories. Wherever we can today, let us affirm the gifts of our fathers, whether they be living or dead. Where our father is no longer here, we can and should honour him in memory, story and prayer. A timely reminder from St Augustine, in taking care of each other, we take care of Christ. In taking care of each other, we take care of Christ.